Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Center for Addiction and Mental Health. My name is Kahandagwas Diane Longboat. I'm Turtle Clan from the Mohawk Nation in Six Nations Grand River Territory. I am the elder for the Center for Addiction and Mental Health and also the senior project manager for guiding directions implementation. Today, we're going to be discussing a really beautiful infographic that we designed along with Indigenous translators. And that infographic talks about mental health is health. The Indigenous knowledge systems that are embedded in our heritage languages are so rich that we wanted to bring our translations forward so that the general public can understand and also our people will be um, upheld for the knowledge systems that we carry to contribute to mental health is health. So when we talk about that translation in English, it really means when one has a good mind and clear thinking, one makes decisions that supports one's personal health, the health of families and the health of the community. And we have had such um, really beautiful support from translators. I want to acknowledge those translators now. Norman Fleury from the Gabriel Dumont Institute at the University of Saskatchewan translated Machif. Angela Shashish and her sister Helen Parker translated for Cree and Cree syllabics from the Meshkigawak tribal of James Bay and Timmins. Anna Loji translated Inuktitut for us from Tungong Vatsugiat in Ottawa. And Ryan DeCare, Associate Professor at the University of Toronto, translated Mohawk for us. For Anishinaabe Moan, the Ojibwe language, Don Enns from Native Child and Family Services of Toronto is a traditional counselor and a healer with the Mental Health Clinic, along with Loretta Asinoe Fox, who works with us out of the CAMH Sudbury office. And we're so grateful to have today with us Don Ants, Loretta Fox, Asinoe, and Ryan DeCare. And so I'll turn it to Don to introduce himself. And what that means in that, when it's translated to English, is that one who carries the teachings. Um, my, uh, my clan is the, the otter. And I'm originally from Manitou now, and my uh, clan colors are blue, brown, and red. And I'm also, I just recently started my uh, new position at the Data of Child and Family Services of Toronto. I'm the elder in residence and uh, knowledge keeper. I only started just uh, June 1st. So that's, uh, that's my uh, that's the capacity I work there now. I'm glad to be here today to uh, take part in this uh, this uh, workshop, and uh, look forward to the uh, look forward to the discussing more about uh, what we're going to be talking about today. Maha miigwech. Miigwech, Don. Loretta, would you like to introduce yourself? Maha miigwech, Diane. Miigwech, Don. Jikwes nishnekas wabilish no den mitungum njwa. The dominance. My um, my uh, spirit name uh, is uh, oldest daughter, and I'm of the Martin clan. Um, I originally um, am a member of the Ogunokong First Nation of Manitoba Island. So I'm an uh, implementation specialist here with Shabe Makwa uh, Center for Addiction and Mental Health. And as Diane mentioned my office is in Sudbury, so uh, that's where I'm joining this uh, this discussion from and look forward to Miigwech. Miigwech, Loretta. And to you, Ryan. Yawakua, Diane. Sego sewa gwego wat anuhora atum, Ryan de care, yo ja swahta, ni the wage no tonu o ni the wagate hi arm. Kanya geha gi keri honyani. 
Uh, hi, greetings, everybody. Um, it's great to see you all. My name is Ryan DeCare. I'm Mohawk, and I'm from the Mohawk Territory, which is where I was born and raised. Uh, currently, I'm a uh, assistant professor. Diane said I was associate. They take that kind of seriously, I guess, at the university. I wish I was, but it's okay. I'm just a, a, I'm a assistant prof at UFT, uh, UFT, and then I'm also a teacher, curriculum developer at Ungawana uh, Gunjokwa, our adult immersion uh, Mohawk immersion program in Six Nations, as well as a PhD student at the University of Hawaii at Hilo. Yawa. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Ryan. Um, we'd like to turn it now to our infographic to um, have an opportunity to look at some of those translations that um, have come to mean so much to us at CAMH. And these translations have been used in banners, uh, pop-up banners that we use both in public events, traditionally when we have Indigenous events at CAMH, and the banners um, indeed do travel to conferences, the Chiefs of Ontario Health Summit and, uh, and other conferences throughout Ontario where um, our, our CAMH tables for information for the work that we do at Shkabe Makwa is uh, shared with our people. And so uh, we'd like to make the, this infographic a little bit bigger so that we can start to look at some of these circles and we're going to be starting with the one at the bottom right, which is Michif. So you will see um, that beautiful infinity symbol that is um, the symbol of our Métis relatives. Mental health is health translated in Michif is a direct translation. And uh, uh, from the Gabriel Dumont Institute, they were able to provide that, that um, translation to us very quickly and so grateful for their participation from Norman Fleury. The next one is Mohawk, and I'm going to turn that over to Ryan. Uh, so uh, here, this this was, um, as I'm sure the other languages also experienced is, it's not necessarily something we say exactly uh, word for word in our, in Ganyan uh with uh, regards to mental health as health. So. Uh, we had to look um, with some consultations with others uh, to look deeply into how we would exactly translate that. And uh, the best way, I think, is this And this really means that um, we talk about this word, uh, meaning it is a good mind or clear minded thinking. Uh, and this is has roots deep in our culture, specifically all the way back to the creation of our uh, Goa, the uh, great law of peace, referring to this idea that um, in order to make good decisions, you have to be of clear thinking or good mindedness. And that kind of is a one way to translate it uh, regarding to uh, uh, health, be, health. And it refers back to this time where we, we talk about this tyrant uh, named Ado Tarho, where we comb the snakes out of his hair. Um, and what they mean by that is that it sy symbolizes that when you're making an important decision, uh, when you're engaging with your family, your immediate family, your extended family, your community, and then your nation, uh, we knew we were, we, we are very practical people and that we don't want our people to be a burden to our society. We want them to contribute to the society. And we've always recognized mental health as something very, very important to our health. And we refer to that as Gatnikori, this idea of good mindedness. And we talk about that all the time uh, when we do this one ceremony, which we call the which is the Thanksgiving address. We give greetings and thanks for everything in creation for maintaining their responsibilities in to, to ensure that the life cycles continue in the way that they were intended. So when we cast our mind to all those things in creation and give thanks to them, we remind ourselves that it is important for us to have a good mind when we're making good decisions in order to make good decisions for ourselves, for our immediate family, and for extended family. And in so giving those thanks, we are encouraging ourselves to put aside things like jealousy or hatred or envy and pride and to think about what is most important. And we metaphorically talk about that 
individually we go throughout the day and we gather what we call burrs, you know, and we call it orfote in our language. And when we're referring to these burrs as being weight on you or being challenges that you are maybe occurring in your life. And when we've put these words together, this uh, what we often call condolence, words of condolence and thanksgiving to help clear your mind, to take the burrs off metaphorically from your body so that you can be, again, this clear mindedness. So this is an ongoing process throughout our lives, and we've always paid attention to it, whether it be with the people who control our traditional government, uh, our chiefs, our clan mothers, but also individually, we've understood that uh, in order for our society to be functioning healthy and equitably, and that individually, each one of our people must we must ensure that we they have got nigohrio, and we put together these specific ceremonies uh, of condolence as well to to give people what we call got uh, which is lifting up their minds, ensuring that they have uh, that peace and clear clarity in their mind. Nyoko. Thank you so much, Ryan, because, uh, you know, when we were learning from the translators at a very uh, special meeting about a year ago, it was really significant for me uh, as a non speaker of the language. I grew up at that time period where um, all of that uh, culture, language, history, a sense of uh, identity and who you are and where you come from was removed from our school system. And I had to learn that at home. And later on, I had to learn it from our chiefs, our clan mothers and our faith keepers by attending ceremonies. And uh, the language for me personally also is my greatest challenge at this stage in my life. I really thank Ryan for embracing the language and inspiring so many of us in, uh, in my age group to continue to learn and to um, understand so much more deeply our culture by this is um, an important time for us because as we start to, to look at the mental health of society as a whole and particularly the mental well-being of our people as First Nations, um, Métis and Inuit, we, we know that our languages are a definite protective factor for us. So I, I thank you, Ryan, for um, for all of that depth of explanation that you gave and how important it is for the keeping um, and growing of that good mind for all of the work that we do. Yeah. The next circle is Ojibwe, Anishinaabe Moan. And you will see in that circle that we have two translators with us today, um, the ones who worked with us at that very special first meeting, and that is uh, Dawn and Loretta. So I'd like to start with you, Don, if you would make some comments on this translation. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to start off by saying what it, I'm going to say what it, what it, uh, the way I, uh, I guess the way I said in uh, personal, no, no, they went to God, was it? Really, really, you know, my, 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 my. For me, I guess uh, when I when I speak in my language, it's uh, um, um, you know, just, the meaning becomes more clear when I speak the language. Because um, I, you know, I go from you know being from a Western uh, way of uh, looking at things, and you go like you go back to the uh, cultural way of uh, the words itself is uh, is is our philosophy, is the way that we uh, we see the world. I know that I've been looking at this word a lot more, um, reflecting on this uh, more because I've been doing a lot of uh, translations here at the uh, at Native Trail. Essential to that uh, translation is uh, I was going to say this very very slow. No, no. Yeah, range goes with. And what that means is what what is really central in that uh, that that word is uh yeah. And that's where that comes from. That word "de" comes from "od." No, no, "ode." No, in "de." In "de" is our heart. So when you look at that that word, that means it's, it, it, to me it, what it means in English. And then it's probably not the most accurate English uh, translation, but it comes close. It really comes close to uh, saying taking care or healing our heart so we can live a good life. 
essential to everything that happens to us in in our in our, in our, in our culture is that you know whatever happens we do it to our hearts you know because our hearts carry all these 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 burdens and these traumas that happen to us so the healing has to start from the heart first and then goes out and it's like a ripple effect and when you look at the uh some of the uh petroglyphs you see these circles inside the uh inside the uh inside the circles and i've learned over the years that there were you know i used to wonder what those circles were inside inside those that, that the outer circle and basically now when i was looking at about looking at the uh, petroglyph about happiness it talks about being in balance in all four directions not just not just the one direction and also and, and the heart is central to that to that to that uh, to that uh, well-being and it's and it, and it, and it, and it touches everything it touches the mind body heart and emotions and the, the physical and the, the whole body so to me that's what it means and it's uh so it has a lot of meaning to me now and, I did, did, uh, previously. and, the, more, and the more i, I um uh, you know think in my language and talk to other people about you know just speaking uh ojibwe every day you know, it, it, it reconnects me back to uh, you know, what the real lessons of our words we mean. We just, uh, uh, there's not that many Ojibwe speakers here in Toronto. Uh, but when I have the opportunity to talk to someone, I just, uh, I mean, that's all I do. I just talk to a person in Ojibwe. I want to talk English. Uh, because to me, English is a very, uh, I, was, I was raised out. Uh, Speaking my language uh, from the very, from ever since I was a child, I didn't know any English when I was growing up. And I learned English when I was about seven, six or seven years old. And I had a really hard time now, you know, adjusting to uh, going to Indian day school. So I've always considered my uh, Ojibwe language as my first language. And to me, English is my, is my uh, second language. To me, it's a foreign language. It's not, it's not, it's not who I am. It's a, uh, it's just part of who I am. So that's all I can share for now. Miigwech. Miigwech, Don. Thank you so much. Loretta, I'll turn it to you. Now, miigwech. Miigwech, Don, Ryan, Ryan. Um, I'm, uh, I just want to say uh, miigwech to uh, uh, my grandparents, my parents, who have all gone on to the spirit world for, uh, for immersing me in the language since uh, since birth and to my peer group who um, also uh, reinforced language speaking even at the uh, Indian Day School to be attended. So I just want to say thank you to, to them for uh, gifting me the opportunity to, uh, to continue to speak and, and teach uh, them. Um, as a Anishinaabe Akwe, um, you know, who uh, takes a lot of time to 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 care for others, as a grandmother, as a mother, we we need to take care of ourselves as well. And I take great uh, pride in, in you know the the language, which is part of my healing, my ongoing healing as well, uh, my ongoing healing journey. Um, so. Minomatsuat, we um, is uh, you know to to help um, the healing will help those as Don had mentioned from the heart out, but to help others as well heal, you know to continue healing um, as they make this their journey through life and um, even as an individual we do that self care and, and healing. So that we can, um, in a good way and positive way, in a healthy way, help others. Um, when you have community that is healthy, the less you feel on your shoulders. And that's a direct quote from a young lady I, I got to meet um, the other day. And I uh, uh, just want to mention her name, Gabrielle. And uh, I thought, wow, that makes so much sense, you know, to have um, you know, your whole community thinking in a healthy way and 
to be able to make those, uh, those decisions, um, you know, for, for the benefit of the community as a whole. So Mino Matsuwat is, uh, Mino, Mino is, uh, it's good, you know, it's, it's, it's healthy. There's so many interpretations of that one small word, Mino. Matsuwat, Matsuwat. Is, is uh, your ability, your, your 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 life? You're a living being, and um, I'm fortunate as well to be able to to write and um, uh, read the language. And never until this part of my life and my journey here on this earth have I ever been able to break down those words. You know, because the verb stems have so much meaning. Uh, to them, and as Don had mentioned, Nananda eh, 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 oh, eh, is our heart. Nananda um, eh, so, so healing those, uh, helping those uh, individuals with their healing, their being healed life. So it's uh, very important to. Um, for me now, anyway, um, to understand these 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 root uh, verb stems and, and, and how they go back, you know, thousands of years to be able to understand their true and original meaning. Um, so uh, I guess I'll, I'll just end it with that. It's it's very uh, um, uh, helpful to me to sit with everyone in this particular. Uh, Recording. I, again, I, I learned so much every time I meet with, you know, translators of, of all languages. And, uh, you can tell uh, the similarities in those root uh, verb stems of the language, whichever language it is, you know, kind of has the same meaning in English and try to explain. So, miigwech. Miigwech, Loretta. I, um, I'm so grateful for your description of uh, verb-based language, and that was another piece that we learned when we were sitting with the translators. And it didn't matter which language, where it came from, vast geographical differences, but that um, Indigenous languages are primarily verb-based languages, and so they're conceptual. So you have to have the, the action and who's doing the action and, you know, the intention of that action built into those conceptual translations. And so very different from English, noun-based, mental health is health. And so you start to see the differences when you have all of those conceptual descriptions built into the language. So we'll turn now to the white circle, which is inuktitut. And it was uh, such a beautiful opportunity to sit with Anna Boji and to hear her translation of this as the day progressed and um, to understand among all of the translators that the reference to having a good mind, a clear mind, a mind um, that was free of drugs, alcohol, anger, um, hatred, jealousy, and so on, all of those concepts built into the good mind that Ryan spoke about are actually appearing in Anuktitut. So the Anuktitut translation, a good mind, healthy relationships. The person is valued by all of the people and has a purpose in the community. And I think that's such a, a magnificent translation because it's not only a recognition of the importance of self, but it's a recognition that people in your community are recognizing your value, your gifts, and the contributions that you can make. And that <clears throat> it's a community-wide uh, recognition of individuals. Because to be mentally health, healthy and to to say we are in a state of wellness or well-being means that, that those relationships within our ourselves as individuals, within our families, within our clans, within our communities, and within our nations are at a state of balance. And so, yes, you know, we are 
as we come out of uh, colonization and we come into a time of cultural resurgence for our people, we are moving in that direction. And so to have good mental well-being means to have that good mind, to have those healthy relationships, to value oneself and to be valued by all the people in the community who understand that you have a purpose and you have gifts and contributions to make. So thank you to Anna for that beautiful translation. We'll turn now to the red circle. And um, so this was uh, Angela Shashish and Helen uh, Parker, who were our Cree translators and very grateful to them that they also provided the Cree syllabics because um, I, some linguists would say that syllabics are a higher form of language uh, development than the Roman orthography. We like to hold on to that concept. So in this particular translation into Cree, it is the Cree that comes from Meshkigawak region of Ontario. And the translation is, health is being healed mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and physically. So we see again, the depth of the culture here represented because the human being is made up of those four distinct parts. Spirit, the spirit that each of us carry, which combines our traditional name, the gift to manifest on the earth, the ancestral lineage that we carry, and also the spiritual mandate that the creator gave us. And he said, he said to us at that time of creation that we are to bring our gifts into the world to create harmony. And so this particular translation refers to that spiritual mandate. It also refers to the heart, the emotional pieces, the compassion, the love, the caring, the kindness, the forgiveness, the empathy, all of those high values that we, we use in child rearing, we use in our cultural relationships, um, and relationships with each other in the community on a daily basis. We are also acknowledging the transition of our communities as we heal and we change and we become uh, the Ngwehunwe people that the Creator meant us to be. That means taking the spiritual teachings, taking our healing emotionally and bringing that into our minds so that as we make decisions every single day for self, for family, and for community, we are making those decisions for the highest good of all. And so these are important translations that our translators have shared with us, and I'm so grateful for everything that they gave because the translations help the Canadian public as a whole to understand the beauty of our cultures, the magnificence of our Indigenous languages and the importance of maintaining languages in the world today. Because we are the guardians and the keepers of the land as nations, Indigenous nations in Canada. And in order for us to fully manifest that guardianship, language is the key to the culture. And to the translators and I want to turn before we leave each other to a very important uh, piece to honor our ancestors. And that is a pictograph petroglyph that we're going to look at now. Thank you to Dawn for bringing this to our attention during the time of our translators meeting. So, Pictographs are typically uh, rock paintings that are found um, throughout um, throughout North America, but this particular one, again, from uh, Northern Ontario, and they also manifest as, as petroglyphs, carvings into rock, and um, the, the ones that are most extensive are at uh, Peterborough. <clears throat> and so in that particular uh, Petroglyphs Provincial Park, those glyphs have been housed now for their protection. And so I'm gonna turn this discussion to Dawn to uh, describe what this pictograph, petroglyph, <coughs> for us today. Um, 
Hlavne večer, dáme. Uh, just want to bring, draw everybody's attention to the first thing on the circle with the uh, four, uh, uh, I guess you can call them sticks, I guess, emanating from the circle. And also the circle within the circle. It's a uh, circle that itself is uh, represent, uh, represents the great spirit. And the inner circle, the small circle inside the circle is, uh, is the, is the, uh, is, is, is actually, it's, it's our heart action. And when you look at the, the four, those four uh, uh, points, the, that represents all that, uh, the mental, spiritual, emotional, and physical aspects of our being. So actually the symbol represents the balance that we need to achieve uh, uh, good mental health or I guess, uh, and also happiness too. And so happiness can be very uh, fleeting sometimes, but here it's uh, uh, whoever translated this means it, it translated to happiness. But the way I look at that is just more of a balance, I think. And the next symbol. Uh, I just want to ask, just, just, I just want to say, having a good heart or a good uh, heart in uh, you know, in our bodies, it's very essential to everything that's, that, that affects us in those four directions, whether, whether it's mental, spiritual, emotional, or physical. So that's what that symbol, that first one now represents. The second one is, uh, represents a uh, uh, good. And there's, there's, also, there's, a, there's another uh, symbol that, go, that goes with that. You know, for the bad, the, the circle, the dot goes on the bottom. And this one is on the top. And I believe it symbolizes the sun rising in the, in the horizon. So it's a, it's so it's a, it's a good it's a good it's a good time. Like you know, it's, it's a, um, I'm not sure why they, they put the symbol in the bottom of but they kind of like think it's you know it's my interpretation of that bottom if it's if the if the uh circle I mean the dot is in the in the bottom of the line. Is that when the, that this this is when the uh the bad spirits come out at night and I remember when my grandmother used to uh smudge our yard outside every evening and she would say I'm I'm doing this because I want to keep the bad spirits out of our home. And it was a time of the walkers back, back when I was young. And, um, so that's what, it, uh, that's my interpretation of uh, the good and bad. And this, this symbol here, this symbol here represents good. And I believe it's the spirits also that are rising, you know, into, uh, into our world. It could also be the eight spirit rising. The next one is a circle with a, with a, uh, with a line uh, on the right. And I, and I believe that's, uh, again, that represents uh, spirit. And I have, I still not looking at the, what actually with that, uh, uh, that symbol that, that's right up, is on the right. I'm not exactly sure why that is in there. But my, uh, my interpretation of that symbol has to do with the uh, uh, stage of life. It mean that it, that, that, uh, because that direction where that's, uh, that symbol is represents uh, birth, birth in the, in the life in the life cycle of a, of a person. So that's my interpretation of that circle, and I think that's why it's still I mean, it's, um, and I think it's pretty, and I, and I think it's quite appropriate. I think it's uh, because actually like our lives do start in uh, the beginning. You know, we have a beginning, and we also have an end. That circle is a, you know, it's a never ending circle with a, with a line that just couldn't even stop at one point. So that's my, uh, that's my interpretation of English. Miigwech, Don. I want to thank you so much for bringing forward um, these symbols and for sharing them with us. Um, these symbols are thousands of years old and no one has ever been able to <clears throat> create 
or the pictographs, but we understand um, that they are thousands of years old left by our ancestors and that they have great meaning for us and a deep spiritual meaning for us. Thank you, Don, for this. I want to, um, to talk to the translators now and to, to ask you if there are any final uh, words or contributions that you would like to make as we bring our time together to a close. And I'll start with Ryan. Great. Uh, thank you, Diane. Uh, Don, as well as Diane, you guys reminded me of a few things that I wanted to say that I, uh, that I neglected to say. When we refer to this notion of which is good or clear mindedness, which seems to be semi universal that you've been talking about, Diane. Um, one thing I forgot to mention was how culturally we talk about this and we talk about this clear minded thinking as in a way, sometimes our individual responsibility that we give thanks and greetings to everything in creation for maintaining their responsibilities. And in a way that's uh, ensuring that we're paying attention to how that everything is continuing to unfold in the way it is intended to ensure that we are, you know, we're looking after ourselves, we're caring for ourselves. But at the same time, we talk about good mindedness as the responsibility of the community as well. So, um, and I think that's one of the things that's often missing within modern society is this support and help from the community in maintaining good mindedness, clear mindedness and mental health. And that's been embedded within our in our cultural pro protocols for as long as we can remember as not just Kanyang or Mohawk, but as Haudenosaunee or Iroquoian people, where, for example, if you've experienced a death or you've experienced great hardship in your life, that it, and you are mourning, they say that those people are which means their minds are flattened and that they're and that in all those people within those clan within that specific clan that they, they're experiencing that grief that it's no longer up to them to de uh, to deal with that grief it's the responsibility of, the people of another clan to help and support those people of that clan to become of good mindedness again so they say those other those people on the other side in the different clan or or you know the lifted up minds or the bright minds and it's their responsibility it's ingrained within our protocols to work to help and support that clan that's experiencing the hardship. So to me, I interpret that as that it is a community responsibility to ensure that individually we are also of a good mind and have that mental health. Yo. 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 Thank you so much, Ryan. That was a really beautiful um, teaching about the sense of what is a good mind, how it appears in self-care, how it ap appears in community care. Thank you so much, Nyawe. Loretta, would you um, offer any final words? Um, I just wanted to uh, again acknowledge uh, thanks to, to Dawn for uh, bringing those symbols for it because uh, I am familiar with the first one and, and that symbol, um, my peer group, uh, my sisters, we would always put in a card, whether it's a birthday card, an anniversary card, Christmas card, we would always put that symbol in. And uh, where along the line I was given that, um, that knowledge of, uh, of even just that symbol, I now have pieced it together with Dawn's sharing of it in its entirety. So for that. Um, um, yes, I, I, I just totally agree with, with Ryan and that uh, uh, our communities, um, you know, they, they have to be on board uh, in a healthy way. And, uh, language, the language is so important um, in our culture, in our ceremony. So we have to, uh, to continue to, to teach the language to next generations and uh, as a grandmother uh, who speaks the language and I'm, um, I have my youngest grandchild uh, Lily who I'm teaching immersing in the language and she is picking it up so quickly she is uh, knows all her body parts on her face she means just sun her hair and uh, she just loves it and uh, for me that's uh, an indication an old soul. So uh, 
this and <clears throat> I can just go on and on about the language but uh, I, I do hope um, you know from this webinar individuals who want to learn you can learn you can learn these words and this language and uh, Hey, Gwetch, hey, Loretta, you're so inspiring. <laughs> Thank you, Don, for any final words you'd like to offer. Uh, I think we all like, it's uh, an amazing every time when uh, we get, get together with uh, different nations. Um, and I've been across North America and I've, you know, I've talked to uh, you know, people from, uh, native people from uh, British Columbia to the plains, Newfoundland, and Southwest uh, United States. It seems like we all seem to be we think pretty much the same. And, and our and our words are very um, our words are, are very, um, our native languages are so essential to uh, like it, it's all verb based. All the language is verb based. There's no. Um, I can, I can, when I listen to other, other speakers talk, even you know, when I listen to my uh, sister-in-law speak, uh, deliver what uh, Kay Yoga that she speaks, I always get this to listen to her. And I, it gives me a sense of belonging when I listen to someone speak. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not trying, I'm not, I'm not, I'm trying not trying to compare uh, uh, our languages to English. English is it has its place in this world also. But every language has its own, uh, I don't know, some kind of vibration, vibrational level or something. But when we speak our own, I'm just going to speak about our, our own tongues. It's, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm really like when I, when I listen to this uh, this uh, presentation you just did this, this, this now, we have one mind. We are, we are one mind. There's no, there's no division. In our, in our cultures. The ones that put up that division in us were the colonists. And that's so, and that's, and, that's, and we have to get, we have to get, uh, get rid of that division. That division in, our, in, our, in any of our, uh, our tribes. So anyway, I'm really glad to have met uh, Ryan and, uh, and uh, for the first time and, uh, and Diane and uh, well, and Sam, I want to thank you for this opportunity. She will let you know now. Uh, the presentation won't be now. We'll be here to go on the beach. Miigwech. Thank you so much for those beautiful words. I want to um, to just uh, end our time together by acknowledging the grandmother turtle that sits in the center of the infographic that that image comes from our creation story of the grandmother turtle holding up the world and encourage everyone to um, learn about your own creation story and to understand the significance of the turtle in your culture. We also understand that the grandmother turtle was here at the beginning of the time of creation and that uh, she speaks all languages and in the ceremonies, sometimes there's a, a being that will speak to us in a language we don't understand. And when we call the turtle to translate for us, we always receive the purest of the sacred messages. So I wanted to acknowledge the turtle that appears in our infographic now. And to thank each of you, Don and Loretta and Ryan, for the life that you have the healing that you're embracing as you learn more of our language and how that language brings our culture alive and how you make that culture come alive in your families. You're very precious to us and we thank you for this beautiful time we've had together. And thank you to all the listeners and we hope that this has been an inspirational time for all of you. Yawa, on behalf of myself and all of the translators and the Center for Addiction and Mental Health.